everyone. Today we're going to do some geography and abstract arts with year five and six, but really anyone can have a go. So the geography feature that we're studying is the Grand Canyon. And we know that if it's 277 um, miles long, you can fit your local town in 166 times. So let's look at the canyon. This is Bryce Canyon. And um, it shows you the deep gorge and the great big um, kind of shadows that are made inside the canyon, how beautiful it is. And there are lots of physical and human features to the canyon. I'm sure you've found out a lot about it online with videos and information. And now we're going to move on to looking at some abstract art. So following a trip that I took in 2012 to the Grand Canyon, um, I created a triptych, which is a series of three paintings which follow, which kind of join together. And they show how wide the valley is and also how just far apart the plateau is. You can see the plateau and all the beautiful colours. I wanted to convey just the vastness and the incredibleness of the place, really. And then secondly, I made another painting and this shows um, a mountain, your main mountain comes down here and there's another mountain here, a smaller one, with the foreground of the rocks and the very pale, beautiful colours in the background. And this is the painting that I wanted to create my abstract art from. So when I think about abstract art, I think about my, the main artist is Wozzily Kandinsky, who was a pioneer of abstract art. This is an example of his work. It's called Composition 8. And he uses lines, shapes, colours in an amazing way. He actually said that um, colour, he compared painting to composing music, and he said that colour is the keyboard, which I thought was a beautiful way to describe it. I'm also going to use some um, Native American symbols in my abstract art, and you will have this in your resources, so you can see the symbols that some of the um, artists use there. I then use my sketchbook to sketch some ideas. So you can see the top picture here shows this is from my paintings. This is my mountain coming down, another mountain there, and this is the background. I used Thunderbird tracks, sun rays, and deer tracks and cactus symbols. And then I tried to abstract my idea. So I tried to simplify my design in this one. And I've included the medicine man's eye, which is a diamond motif. And then in the final picture, I added colour, so I've got um, just some watercolours that I used and just kind of tried to blend it all in to make one design. I've also used some Kandinsky sort of ideas and motifs in that side. This week we've been looking at topographical mapping, which is a way to show the physical features of the land. So this gives you a good example. You've got the mountain here and underneath, so this is just a drawing, and then underneath You've got a topographical map which shows the contours of the land and this is the peak of the mountain which is 4,500 metres high so that's the elevation. If the lines are close together that's a steeper slope, if they're further apart that's more gradual. So let's have a look and see. Next I used this as my inspiration as well. Um, I created a salt um, dough model and this shows my my mountain on my paintings that's the bigger mountain and the smaller mountain and the contour lines around the mountains um, and then if you look at it like this you can see if the lines are closer together they're steeper that's like your flat image and if the lines are further apart that means that's the more gradual slope I use this image for my art today for my inspiration and it shows the peaks of the mountains here with the contour lines coming out, almost looks like a ripple effect when you throw a pebble into the water. And so from that, in my sketchbook again, I created some images. So this one shows three mountain peaks with the lines in between, with the contour lines. I wasn't 100% happy with that one, so I went to have a go at this one. And this one came together better as composition. And then the one at the bottom shows my two, I focused on my painting with my two mountains there and then the lines in between. So that's the one that I'm using today. And that also I use pink and green, which are opposites on the color spectrum. So they're complementary colors. Okay, so I'm now going to transfer this picture. So I've already started doing it onto this larger piece here. So I'm following my pencil lines with my black felt tip pen. So I'll carry on doing that now. This is the valley part of my picture. 
don't worry too much if it doesn't follow exactly your image that you have already or you can just do this freehand like I'm doing it's lovely because the lines are very flowy now we have the other mountain peak is here always this bit always reminds me of an ear shape and these lines here are closer together so that's going to be your steep slope another one here and you can kind of just make it up as you go along in a way it really doesn't matter there we go and now I'm going to add some colour so I'm going to go to my colour wheel and today I'm cho I've chosen two opposite colours so two complementary colours the first one is a red so if I turn it around that way it's a red purpley colour red pinky so that's here and then opposite that on the colour wheel is like a greeny yellow colour there so I'm now going to transfer these complementary colours or opposites to my paint, to my picture. And the reason for using complementary or opposite colours is that they work differently. Different colours look differently next to other colours. So they look different. So there's the pink. And you can smudge this because these are chalk pastels. They're lovely and smudgy. They go smoky. And then I'm going to try my green, which is like quite a quite a light green and now you'll see that the pink and green start to act together and they you want them to zing next to each other you want them to have like a real pop of color and then on this side as well you can use the same colors you can use the alternate two colors or you can add in other tones you can add in different greens different pinks maybe some reds to make it more tonal and let's see now what happens when I add some more red on this side again on this one let's see and then we're going to choose a family of colors so we're going to choose a family of color now so we're going to go back to our color chart um, I know that the Havasupai tribe who live near in and around the Grand Canyon they have, they have, their name Havasupai means blue green water. So I'm now going to choose some blues and greens on this side. That so they on this side of the colour wheel, and they create a family of colours. So they're slightly different to using complementaries, which are opposites. These colours are all designed to go together and sort of make tonal values together. So I've used like a medium green. Now I've got. A lighter blue, I quite like those together. You can order the colours, you can go from lighter to darker. You can mix them up, You maybe you want to add some pink in as well. Um, sometimes I like to add green on top of the blue to see what that looks like. And I'm just going to choose maybe a darker blue to go in this line here. Quite like I quite like the darker colours in the very thin line with the very thin shapes the skinny shapes in between and then back to a medium blue on that side and you can have a play around see what happens go for it you can use watercolor you can use uh, color pens pencils anything you have to hand so here's one i did earlier and um, this is um I've, on this one i've used watercolor so the colors are watercolor and the this is oil pastel so that the watercolour sort of acts like a wax resist. So when you paint over the wax pastel, um, it doesn't sort of, it still shows up. I've used blues and greens. I've added some blues on top of the green to show the flowing river. It's still abstract because it's, we're just looking at shapes, colours and lines. And also my daughter had a go, her one is completely different. She uses black contour lines, very dark blue in between. And she's got a pattern of red lines and a lovely red border. So she's, so she's really focused in on the pattern. Next week, we're going to create some photography art. So we're going to look at the art of Ansel Adams, who was a photographer who photographed the Grand Canyon. And we're going to create some art next week. So see you next time.